Hello, welcome to Kids, Toys, and More Story Time. Today we'll be reading A Charlie Brown Christmas. Christmas time was here, the time when snowflakes fell softly and the sounds of carols rang through the air. It was the time filled with happiness, and for children everywhere, it was their favorite time of year. But one little boy wasn't feeling very excited about Christmas. I just don't understand Christmas, Charlie Brown said, as a light snow began to fall. I might be getting presents, sending Christmas cards, and decorating trees, but I'm still not happy. I always end up feeling depressed. You're the only person I know who can take a wonderful season like Christmas and turn it into a problem, Linus replied. Lucy's right. Of all the Charlie Browns in the world, you're the Charlie Browniest. At the local skating pond, the boys found their friend playing a round of Crack the Whip. Snoopy grabbed Linus's blanket to drag him onto the ice, but he caught Charlie Brown in it and sent him flying into a snowbank. Good grief. Charlie Brown wasn't surprised. Things like that always happened to him in the holiday season when he didn't get cards and even his own dog ignored him, only made it more obvious he needed someone to talk to. Lucy dashed over to her psychiatry booth to meet Charlie Brown. May I help you? she asked. I am in sad shape, Charlie Brown replied with a sigh. My trouble is Christmas. I just don't understand it. Instead of feeling happy, I feel sort of let down. Lucy knew just how to fix Charlie Brown's problem. You need to get involved in a Christmas project, she declared. How would you like to be the director of our Christmas play? Me? But I don't know anything about directing a Christmas play, Charlie Brown fretted. Don't worry, I'll be there to help you, Lucy said. I'll meet you at the auditorium. Just then, Snoopy walked past carrying a box filled with decorations. Charlie Brown followed Snoopy back to his doghouse. What's going on here? Charlie Brown asked. Snoopy handed him a flyer, and Charlie Brown read, Find the true meaning of Christmas. Win money, 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 at the spectacular super colossal lights and display contest. Oh no, my own dog has gone commercial. I can't stand it, Charlie Brown threw the flyer on the ground. On his way to the auditorium, he ran into his sister Sally. I've been looking for you, big brother, she said sweetly. Will you please write a letter to Santa Claus for me? You write it, and I'll tell you what I want to say. I have been extra good this year. Sally knew exactly what she wanted, but her list was so long. She decided it would be easier to ask for money. How about tens and twenties, she suggested. Tens and twenties? Oh, even my baby sister, Charlie Brown groaned. Surely Christmas was about more than money and presents. In the auditorium, the whole Peanuts gang danced to a jazzy tune that Schroeder played on his piano. Charlie Brown walked onto the stage. Let's get right down to work, he said. It's important that you pay strict attention to the director. Am I right? I said, am I right? But no one paid attention to Charlie Brown. They had started dancing again. Stop the music, Charlie Brown yelled. We're going to do this play and we're going to do it right. 
Lucy, pass out those scripts and costumes. One by one, the kids found out their roles in the play. Frida would play the innkeeper's wife. Pigpen would play the innkeeper. Shermie would play the shepherd. And Snoopy would play all the animals in the script. And even some that weren't. Let's rehearse the scene at the end, directed Charlie Brown. Let's take it from the top places. Action! But once more, the kids started dancing and fooling around. Charlie Brown rolled his eyes. Good grief. That does it, Charlie Brown exclaimed. If we're ever going to get this play off the ground, we've got to have some cooperation. Let's face it, replied Lucy. We all know that Christmas is a big commercial racket. Well, this is one play that's not going to be commercial, Charlie Brown insisted. We need the proper mood. We need a Christmas tree. Lucy nodded excitedly. A great big shiny aluminum Christmas tree? That's it, Charlie Brown. You get the tree. I'll handle this crowd. Okay, I'll take Linus with me. The rest of you practice your lines. Charlie Brown said firmly. Get the biggest aluminum tree you can find, Charlie Brown called Lucy. Yeah, do something right for a change, Charlie Brown added Peppermint Patty as the boys walked into the cold winter night. They followed a set of gleaming spotlights to a Christmas tree lot. It was filled with shiny metal trees, polka dotted trees, and trees in every color of the rainbow. Clank, 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 Linus knocked on one of the metal trees. Gee, do they still make wooden? Christmas trees, asked Linus. He didn't see anything like that in the Christmas tree lot. Then Charlie Brown spotted a small, scraggly pine tree. It had a wooden trunk and soft green needles. This little green one here seems to need a good home, he said excitedly. I don't know, Charlie Brown, Linus said. Remember what Lucy said. This doesn't seem to fit the modern spirit. I don't care, Charlie Brown insisted. We'll decorate it and it'll just and it'll be just right for our play. Besides, I think it needs me. Soon Charlie Brown and Linus walked onto the stage. We're back, Charlie Brown announced as he set the tree on top of Schroeder's piano. When the kids rushed over to see the tree, their mouths dropped in shock. The scraggly little tree was not what they had expected. You are supposed to get a good tree. Can't you even tell a good tree from a poor tree? Lucy asked. You're hopeless, Charlie Brown, added Peppermint Patty. Charlie Brown sighed. I shouldn't have picked this little tree. Everything I do turns into a disaster. I guess I really don't know what Christmas is all about. Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? He exclaimed. Sure, Charlie Brown, replied Linus. I can tell you what Christmas is all about. Linus crossed to the center of the stage. The lights dimmed and a spotlight showed, spotlight shone down on him. And there were in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring unto you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown picked up the tree and walked outside. He stared up the night sky. Linus is right, he said. I won't let all this commercialism ruin my Christmas. I'll take this little tree home and decorate it, and I'll show them it really will work in our play. When he passed Snoopy's doghouse, Charlie Brown pulled a shiny red ornament off the doghouse and proudly hung it on the tree. But a tiny tree buckled under the weight of the ornament. A look of horror crossed Charlie Brown's face. I've killed it. Oh, everything I touch gets ruined. His head hung in defeat. Charlie Brown sadly walked away. Then the rest of the Peanuts gang arrived. I never thought it was such a bad little tree, Linus said. He straightened the tree's bent trunk and wrapped his blanket around its base. 
It's not bad at all, really. It just needs a little love. Without speaking, the other kids took the lights and ornaments off Snoopy's doghouse and used them to decorate. Before their very eyes, it transformed into a beautiful Christmas tree. Charlie Brown walked up to the group and barely recognized the tree. What's going on here? And together, gathered around the beautiful Christmas tree, they all began to sing. The end.